Seth Ferranti here, your guide through the dark corners of the criminal underworld. As an outlaw filmmaker, author, and journalist, I've delved deep into the minds of gangsters, drug lords, and prison gangs. But my journey doesn't stop there. Let me take you on a thrilling ride as we explore the hidden stories and untold truths that lurk behind the prison walls. In 1986, a Mafia Commission trial began. Five mob chieftains were indicted as a federal government with lead prosecutor Rudy Giuliani tried to take down the mob's hierarchy by convicting the bosses who resided on the commission. Big Paul Castellano, Fat Tony Salerno, Tony Dux Corallo, Rusty Rastelli, and Persico were all facing time for being the heads of New York's five families. The Persicos were a large family with an ominous presence within the Columbos, says Larry McShane, author of Chin, The Life and Crimes of Mafia Boss, Vincent Gigante. Carmine's brothers Alphonse and Theodore joined the Profaci-led family while young, and a second generation followed. The Persicos took over following Joe Colombo's shooting, and another son, Michael, became a powerful figure. But that power didn't stop the law from continuing to convict Persico of crimes, relating to his mafia leadership. Well, here in New York today, after five days of deliberation, an anonymous federal court jury convicted three crime bosses of serving on the so-called Mafia Commission. Five lower-ranking mob figures were also convicted on all counts while carrying out the commission's orders. Authorities had contended that since 1930s, that organized crime had a national board of directors carving out territory and settling disputes. Now an FBI man says that all the members are either in the grave or headed to prison. In 1986, the Mafia Commission trial began. Five mob chieftains were indicted as the federal government with lead prosecutor Rudy Giuliani tried to take down the mob's hierarchy by convicting the bosses who resided on the commission. Big Paul Castellano, Fat Tony Salerno, Tony Dux Corallo, Rusty Ristelli, and Persico were all facing time for being the heads of New York's five families. At the trial, Persico decided to represent himself. He had been through so many cases that he thought he was the best person to defend himself against the charges. It would prove to be a big mistake. Colombo family boss Carmine Persico Jr. may have been the one to suffer most today. Earlier this week, he was sentenced to 39 years in prison on a previous rackets conviction. Persico couldn't even blame today's conviction on his lawyer, since the mobster chose to act as his own attorney throughout the trial. Stanley Meyer was Persico's legal advisor. I think he did a great job. And but you know, the way it turns out, it doesn't matter. In other words, it's impossible. I think the whole system is, uh, is geared against uh, any of these defendants. He thought he was smart enough to do it himself. A lot of guys wouldn't do that. Carmine just had the balls to do it. He really thought they had nothing on him. He really felt that it was all hearsay and bullshit. He thought he was going to win that. He put a good argument up, which even the judge complimented him on. But you ain't going to win against the feds. Rudy Giuliani's war on the mob stirred such a panic across New York's five families that a meeting of the bosses was called, wherein the suggestion of having the zealot prosecutor whacked came up. Three of the five bosses gave the idea a thumbs down, but two others, John Gotti, who came into power after killing Castellano, and Carmine Persico, argued for killing Giuliani. However, majority ruled and Rudy's life was spared. Giuliani hated the Mafia and Persico in particular with a passion. He wasn't pulling any punches and was on a mission to throw the book at Persico and the other Mafia leaders. Persico knew it was part of the game, but has often reflected on Giuliani. In prison, he told Robert Rosso, a convicted meth dealer doing life, I've been in prison almost 30 years and I'm still married. I talk to my wife every night. She comes and sees me and I have kids that I love and adore whom I'm close to. Giuliani's been married three times, and his kids hate him so much they won't even talk to him. Who's the dog? Which one was, other than uh, the one you mentioned, was the most interesting to you as you were researching it? Yeah, I like I like the, the snake the snake article too. I mean, you know that that dude, I mean he had a, a really, really long career. You know, I mean they said like he was controlling, you know, that, that stuff from the, the penitentiary for like ever. You know, like like that dude, even even like his history, like you go all the way back to like the sixties and seventies, 
you know, and, and, and he was with like one faction and then he, you know, he switched up. So there's just all these, there's all these different dynamics because it depends on who you talk to. What you know, story you get. Yeah. And what story you get, you know, to some, you know, he was a betrayer, you know, to others, he was like, you know, a really cunning, smart dude. So I think he kind of, uh, epitomizes you know like like the mafia don i mean you know every, everybody talks about Gotti or everybody talks about luciano but you look at some of these other dudes man i mean these dudes were in the trenches man and i mean anybody that knows that life i mean that, that's a violent cutthroat life and you got to be a super cunning dude and i i respect kind of like maybe not necessarily the most violent guys in that life but i respect like you know the manipulators the ones that kind of move around. And I, I think the snake was like, like one of those dudes. Persico wanted to do just one thing with his life, be the leader of a gang. His dream came true as a teenager, as boss of the Garfield boys, the toughest and deadliest gang out there. And his dream came true again years later when he became the boss of the Colombo crime family. After serving 33 years of a 139 year prison sentence, Carmine Persico died of complications arising from diabetes, according to his lawyer. The 85-year-old crime boss was known as The Snake, a nickname he reportedly hated. The Snake was a true mafioso, OG of epic proportions. You know, this dude has gone down in the annals of gangster lore as a bad motherfucker. Not only a gangster legend, but a devoted family man. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Seth Ferrante's True Crime. Watch, hit the like button, make a comment, tell me who you want me to cover, and definitely subscribe.